Greetings YouTube viewers. Today I'm going to be making a video about why cosine of 60 degrees is 0 0.5 but it's so much more than that. So you may have been told to memorize certain values like cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 0 0.5 and then um, sine of 60 degrees equals to 0 0.5 root 3 or you can write this as 1 over 2 you can write this as root 3 over 2 this time I'm just gonna work in degrees although usually I work in radians so that everyone can have access to this information and if you know radians you can probably understand the, the conversion between degrees and radians so imagine an equilateral triangle now everyone knows that the sum of all the angles in, an, in any triangle is 180 degrees. Yes, so these three angles add up to 180 degrees. And we know that these three sides are the same. And if these three sides are the same, and these three angles add up to 180 degrees, well, if these three sides are the same, then that means that these three angles must be the same as well because these two sides are the same for this angle and they give this side these two sides are the same and they give this side and these two sides are the same and they give this side so that means that the angles must have been the same if it was a smaller angle it would give a smaller side but that doesn't happen anyway so let's call this alpha beta and theta right they're just names we give to angles, like variables, but for angles. They're angle variables, just normal variables. But we generally tend to use these as convention for angles. So alpha plus, plus beta plus theta equals 180 degrees. But we also know that alpha equals beta equals theta because these three angles are equal, so they equal each other. This implies that so alpha plus beta plus theta, alpha is the same as theta, beta is the same as theta. So three times theta is equal to 180 degrees. So theta is equal to 60 degrees, 180 divided by three. 180 degrees divided by three. All right, so we have that, that's understood. Now, we can divide this triangle into half so we split it along this line we half it so this let this be the midpoint and this angle over here is 90 degrees because you're finding the perpendicular height see and let's say because we're halving it and we don't want to work with fractions if you want to work with fractions that that's cool you can call the sides x as well but for simplicity, because I'm halving it and I still want an integer, I'm just going to call this length. So the length from here to here, I'm going to call it 1. I'm going to call this length 1. All right. So the length from this point to this point is 1. And the side length is, of course, double that. So that's 2. All right. And we know that this angle is 60 degrees. Now, we just halved this length. So we must have halved this angle as well. So this angle. Or you could use the fact that these three angles add up to 180 degrees. This is a right angle, which means it's 90 degrees. This is 60 degrees. Either way, you know that this angle is 30 degrees. Either from the fact that it's half of 60 or from the fact that these three add up to 180. This is 60. This is 90. So now you have a triangle 60 degrees 30 degrees 1 and 2 now immediately you can find some stuff about this so you know the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse and the adjacent is 1 and the hypotenuse is 2 so you know both of these so you know immediately that cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 1 over 2. 
So that's where that comes from. But this allows you to tell so much more cool stuff. This one is not even taking space. Um, and also, the sine of 30 degrees is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So immediately we also know that sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 over 2. There, two identities. So whenever you've forgotten these identities, just think about the equilateral triangle of side length 2. Okay? And then you divide it into two, split the triangle in half. This is 90 degrees. Then cosine of the big angle, the one which was in the original, 60 degrees, is 1 over 2. Sine of the big angle is 1 over 2. Uh, sine of the small angle, 30 degrees, half of the big angle, is 1 over 2. Now, we don't know this side, but we can find it out using the Pythagorean theorem. Let this side be h. And the reason I'm using h is because it's the height of the triangle. You can use any number, any variable. But we know from the Pythagorean theorem that 2 squared is equal to 1 squared plus 8 squared. Or you might write it the other way. But 2 is the hypotenuse, 1 is the side length, uh, h is the other side length. So 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is just 1 plus h squared. So h squared equals 3. And since we know that h is a length, that means h is equal to modulus h. It just means the absolute value in this case. Um, therefore, this implies that h is equal to square root 3. All right. So that was pretty easy to derive. So now that we have the knowledge that h is square root 3, now we can find the co now we can find the sine of 60 degrees and the cosine of 30 degrees. So the sine of 60 degrees is the opposite, which is h, that's right, equals root 3. And then over the hypotenuse, which is just 2. There we go. That's why. It's not about memorization. It's about understanding why. And if you understand why, it will be much more easy. You won't have to memorize it or it will stick longer in your memory. And then now we can also find the cosine of 30 degrees. So cosine 30 degrees is equal to, again, square root of 3, the adjacent for the 30 degrees, square root of 3, divided by 2. Bang. So now we've just proven, we've just proven that the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 over 2, sine of 30 degrees is 1 over 2, sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, and cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2, with some simple mathematics. Now, another triangle which is often um, something you're told to memorize, but you really shouldn't have to, is this one. So let's say the side length is 1 here and 1 here. So that means they're equal, right? This side is equal to this side, and this is 90 degrees. Now, um, what's the angle going to be? Well, think about it. If this, so what we're going to do here is we're going to just complete the square, sort of. So we're just going to put another identical triangle like this. This is a square. It doesn't look like one. So let me draw a better square. In fact, actually, let's start with a square. So let's take a square of side 1. 1, 1, 1, 1. All right. We know these two, all four of these angles are 90 degrees. But we're just going to draw these two because we want to split these up. Now, we divide this square into half. Both of these triangles have equal area. They're half, OK? Now, if we divide them in half, the angles also get divided in half because we're dividing them exactly along this line. So half of 90 degrees is 45 degrees. Or you could say pi over 4. I personally prefer tau over 8, but whatever. Um, so we know that this is 45 degrees. And we divide this 90 degrees thing in half, this 90 degree angle. So then this is also 45 degrees. Or you can do uh, 180 minus 45 minus 90. Either way, you find out that this is 45 degrees. All right. Now, you're often asked to memorize the sines and cosines of 
um, 45 degrees or pi over 4. But you don't really have to memorize them. You can just think of it as half of the square. So I'm just going to draw one of the triangles here. We understood the reason why we did this was so that we could understand where this comes from, where the 45 degrees comes from. It doesn't just drop from the sky. So we have 145 degrees, 145 degrees. Now, if we want to find the tangent of this, we can find the tangent pretty easily. Tan of 45 degrees is just 1. So that's a very useful thing to remember. Tan of 45 degrees is 1. Because both of the sides are the same. Opposite and adjacent. For both of these angles. Because they're the same angle. So it makes sense that they have the same tan. But let's call this one also H. <laughs> this time H for hypotenuse. So H squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1 squared from Pythagorean theorem. All right, now, 1 squared is 1 is equal to 1 plus 1. So h squared is equal to 2. And again, h is a modulus. h is a length, so h is equal to modulus h. You can call this absolute value of h for this purpose. But in stuff like vectors, it's different from just the absolute value. But in this case, yeah, you can just use the absolute value. Use it as absolute value. h is equal to square root of 2. And so now we can find that the cosine of 45 degrees, which is the same as the sine of 45 degrees, because let's say you divide this side by h. So you're getting sine of 45 degrees, yeah? 1 over h, because if you take this angle, because this is 45 degrees, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. But for this angle, which is also 45 degrees, you're also getting the cosine. So the sine and the cosine are the same. Cosine of 45 degrees is equal to sine of 45 degrees is equal to 1 over square root of 2 which some people like to re rationalize the denominator so you can write the square root of 2 over 2 and what we did here is just multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2 and this becomes square root of 4 this becomes square root of 2 square root of 4 is the same as uh, absolute value square root of 4 is the same as 2 um, so yeah, you get root 2 over 2. I personally prefer this form. One thing I realized now that I forgot uh, was the tan of 60 degrees and tan of 30 degrees. But that's also not that difficult to derive. So now that we know that h is root 3 and this one is 1, this side is 1, so we can find the tan of 60 degrees. Tan of 60 degrees is equal to square root 3 over 1 which is just square root 3 and the tan of 30 degrees is equal to 1 which is the opposite of 30 over square root 3 well you, you can also write this as you can multiply both sides by square root of 3 to rationalize the denominator although this is the simplest form you can write this as square root 3 times 1 is square root 3 over square root 3 times square root 3 is square root 9 which is the same as 3. Um, just want to point out one thing if you still want a quick and easy way of remembering now that you understand how it works but if you just want a quick and easy way of remembering think about the big angle and the small angle all right the big angle is 60 degrees or pi over 3 um, so the big angle think about a big angle like this. If it's a big angle, it has a big opposite and a small adjacent comparatively. If it's a small angle, right, same length of the hypotenuse, it has a small uh, opposite and big adjacent. So big angle means big opposite. Big opposite for the big angle is 60 degrees or pi over 3. Um, the big opposite is root 3, the small opposite, uh, the small adjacent is 1. For the small angle, which is 30 degrees, um, the, big op the small opposite is 1, the big adjacent is 2. Uh, the big adjacent is 
root 3. So, but this way, you don't have to keep them memorized. If you ever forget them, remember the two things, equilateral triangle and square. And if you want to, if you think you can remember one more thing, just remember the side lengths. Equilateral triangle with side length 2 and the square with side length 1. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, make sure you subscribe to Compendium.